now on Sunrise, beginning to the end. COVID vaccines could start shipping out today across the country. The final step that needs to happen before that first dose is given out. Plus, Governor Walls delivering an important message today ahead of a busy week here at the Capitol. I'm breaking down how it could affect you and your family. It's a change in our weather pattern that starts today. Much cooler stretch ahead. Then your package is ready. It's a text we all want to see as we wait for our holiday gifts to arrive. But this message could end up costing you much more than a delivery fee. And discovering the latest up and coming Twin Cities bands at the library. The newest music hub giving you backstage access. It's Friday, December 11th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Hitting newsstands this morning, Time Magazine's Person of the Year issue. On the cover, right there, the winners, President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Now, this year really could have been anybody from parents to teachers to frontline workers. So do you think that the, that the time made the right call? Text us 763-797-7215. Another big story this morning, Taylor Swift dropping a surprise new indie album overnight. Take a listen. Yeah, the album is already blowing up online with over a million hits. This is her second album of this year. You know, Laura's a Swifty. I'm like totally the album? My girls are Swifties too. I didn't wake up at midnight to listen, <laughs> but you know what? She's in love and she's inspired. She, yeah. Is she married? There was rumors that she's married. You know, I wouldn't believe inside. it. I would believe okay. it. <laughs> Our insider source here. All right, uh, we've got Alicia <laughs> with traffic. Laura, let's get, let's get to weather. 33 degrees, cloudy right now. See the wind chill, 25. Both these numbers stay pretty consistent throughout the day. Temps in the 30s, but dress for the 20s. That's the, the main gig that we have for today as winds stay right near 10 miles an hour. So probably drop down to about 32 in the next couple of hours before we're on our way up to 38 for an afternoon high. Not a lot of sunshine no matter where you're watching from. Best chance for that today would be up in far northern Minnesota. Don't count on any in the metro. And the good news, no crashes around the Twin Cities Metro, but this is the big story of the weekend. Uh, 62 is going to be closed in both directions. Start, it started last night and it's actually going to be closed until Monday morning at 6 a.m. I'll have more details and the detour information here coming up. Well, new this morning, the first shipments of the Pfizer vaccine prep kits being shipped out to all 50 states. This brand new video showing UPS delivering boxes in Louisville. They contain syringes, masks and visors, sanitizer and diluting agent for administering the vaccine and vaccination record cards. Now, Pfizer is planning to send nearly 3 million doses in the first week, protected by U.S. Marshals to every state based on population. First, the FDA has to give final approval of the vaccine that could happen as soon as today. Today. Here in Minnesota, we're slated to get about 183,400 doses by the end of the year. Vaccinations could begin as early as the week of Christmas. The first doses will go to healthcare workers who work in COVID hospital units and emergency departments. And we're live now at the Mall of America this morning. Take a look. In just a few hours, a new testing site will open uh, in the north ramp. It'll cost you 99 bucks to get a test coming up at 630. We'll look into just how long it will take to get your results. And we're also at the state capitol. Gordon Severson is there and uh, Governor Walls urging people to be cautious during the pandemic today. His messages come as lawmakers get ready to make some huge decisions. Gordon. Yeah, all of this starts this afternoon with Governor Walls and a few health care leaders holding a press conference just a few blocks from here to ask Minnesotans to stay vigilant and keep up the social distancing as we head into the holidays. And then on Monday, lawmakers will be here at the state capitol for another special session to go over another relief package for businesses that are struggling. Now, there is some agreement going in. Democrats and Republicans have already hashed out a bill that would give $100 million to bars, restaurants and gyms that lost at least 30% of their business due to these ongoing restrictions. Another $102 million would go out to counties, which would then take that money and give it to local businesses that are struggling. And $14 million would go out to theaters and convention centers. There is some disagreement, though, on unemployment benefits. House Democrats would like to extend them for 13 weeks. Senate Republicans, however, expect the federal government will do that instead. We have to make sure that Minnesotans have access to unemployment insurance now, and we can't wait for the federal government to act. We don't know when that's going to happen. The goal of this is while their doors are locked, we don't want them putting uh, plywood in the windows. We want them to be able to survive these next few weeks. 
On Monday, the governor will also announce whether he will extend the restrictions that are currently in place on businesses or if he will let business go back to normal. Now, these restrictions are set to expire a week from today, and the governor has hinted already that there will be at least some limitations moving forward because he says with the situation right now, COVID wise, he basically the doing nothing is not an option right now. Back to you. All right, Gordon, everyone anticipating Monday. Thank you. A live picture from Capitol Hill now where a government shutdown is looming over the country. It's because of a delay over the defense bill. The spending bill would keep the government open for another week. The Senate needs to come to an agreement before midnight. We're also following breaking news out of Wisconsin. A lot of questions this morning over an officer involved shooting in Wauwatosa. Police say they were responding to a call about two women fighting. When they arrived, there was some sort of altercation and shots were fired. One person went to the hospital. No word yet on injuries. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. Now time for your morning rush. A Minnesotan has been tapped to lead the Department of Veterans Affairs. Dennis McDonough is from Stillwater and is no stranger to the White House. He held several roles during the Obama administration. He's the second Minnesotan to be chosen for Biden's cabinet. Minneapolis native Jake Sullivan will serve as a national security advisor. An Orono teenager is alive thanks to some incredible timing from first responders. Grace Hornbaker crashed last Friday and ended up upside down in Lake Minnetonka. At the same moment, crews with the Excelsior Fire District were driving by and they jumped into action. I started yelling and I heard them say, we've got you and I was in shock. I did not, I did not think I was going to get out. Honestly, the teen suffered mild hypothermia, but ended up being OK. A Mayo program is being recognized by the CDC. It focuses on making sure people of color are staying healthy. The program originally focused on preparing black communities for natural disasters, but pivoted to focus on the pandemic. The CDC published a program as a framework to be used across the country. And the Gophers are starting off the season as 6 and 0 after a win against UMKC last night. Liam Robbins led the way with 27 points. Gophers win it 90 to 61. They play sixth ranked Illinois on Tuesday. And that's your Friday morning rush. Well, now to one of the biggest conversations happening right now online with nearly 1,000 comments and counting. Times Person of the Year is President elect Joe Biden and his VP Kamala Harris, which, as you just saw, has come to a surprise to many of you. So, how and why were these two chosen for 2020? Well, the magazine chooses people who the editors believe had most influenced the world during this global pandemic. Times Person of the Year is a designation, not necessarily an honor or award, but is representative of the influence the person has had, or persons in this case, on the news cycle within this past year. And this is the first time that a vice presidential pick has been on the cover. And the magazine says that the ticket represents something historic. Definitely is historic. Uh, Fabian here says it was the right cho choice, saying that history has been made. And a lot of people thought it would be healthcare workers, or as Troy says, hoping for essential workers. Others thought Dr. Fauci should have been chosen. And as I was scrolling through a lot of your comments, I saw George Floyd's name come up quite a few times. And then there's others though, of course, we always have those people making light of Time's pick. They were saying Baby Yoda should have been the person of the year. So I want to hear from you this morning. If you think Time made the right choice, text me 763 797 7215. We're going to share some of your comments in less than 10 minutes. But I, as we were talking about this yesterday, trying to figure out who are they going to pick, mm -hmm. we all were saying healthcare workers, yeah. right? It was a bit surprising, but yeah. as you explain it a little bit more, it makes more sense. And also, hey, time can pick whoever they want, whoever right? They want. right. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for sharing, Alicia. Let's get quick to Laura for one thing weather. You bet cloudy today, so when you send the kids out for their breaks from a digital learning, keep in mind that the wind will be blowing at 10 miles an hour, so you'll still need hats, mittens, because wind chills today are in the 20s. And hey, 62, the big story of the, the weekend really is that it's going to be closed in both directions. This is down in the southwest corner of the metro near Eden Prairie. You can see a police officer there, barricades in place. It's going to be closed until Monday at 6 a.m. Well, hey, your package is waiting for you. It's the kind of messages that you want to hear as you wait for your holiday gifts to be delivered. Tiffany Craig explains why those messages could get you into a lot of trouble with scammers. So many of us are shopping online and scammers are paying attention. They're sending out phony text messages pretending to be from UPS or FedEx. I'm Tiffany Craig. The text message might read like this. 
Your FedEx package with tracking code, whatever it is, is waiting for you to set delivery preferences. That code makes it seem legit, but it's not. There's usually a link and the scammers want you to click on it so they can steal your personal information or download malware onto your computer. So the Better Business Bureau has tips to avoid delivery scams altogether. Ensure safe delivery. Buy shipping insurance if you have a valuable or fragile item and make sure you get a tracking number. Request a signature. Sure, that means spending a little extra, but you'll know it won't be just dropped off somewhere. And don't leave packages on the doorstep. Have them delivered to family or friends at home or even to your work so it's not tempting for a thief. And finally, if you get one of those delivery scam texts, just delete it. Yeah, all good tips and reminders right now as we head into this holiday season. All right, 611 right now, a COVID whistleblower's house gets raided. We get a look at the body camera video and why she says the story goes far beyond these viral clips. Plus, Ellen DeGeneres tests positive for COVID-19. What this means for her show that's already taken a hit in ratings. Then backstage access to some of your favorite Twin Cities musicians and all you need is a library card. And President-elect Joe Biden and VP Vice President-elect Kamala Harris named this year's Time Person of the Year. Did time make the right call? Text us your thoughts. We want to hear from you. And we'll share some of your answers coming up in five minutes.